Shalom, it's Mariah Lisa with Mariah Shelley Village. I recently published a post on my blog to show you guys what we were going to be doing for literature next year for my sixth grader. And then on that blog I shared I had a YouTube video coming because so many people have been asking me, was I going to really go through the books and I guess introduce you to the book, show it to you, why we chose it, etc. So this is why I'm shooting this video today. The we have 12 books that we're going to read next year um, with my sixth grader. They're various genres, if you've read the post already. Um, different African-American authors. The majority of them are African-American authors. And I do look for African-American men specifically just because I have a man child. So the very first book that we are going to read is As Brave As You, Jason Reynolds. And I will put a link to my blog post in the description box and you can go there and click on each individual title if you want to purchase it or read more about it. So As Brave As You is going to be, look how thick it is, it's going to be the longest book <laughs> that my son has read to date. I, I think we did maybe 240 pages so far and so this is like a big jump i think it's like uh a little over 400 pages so we're definitely going to start with this first while we're fresh and all excited about the school year because uh, as you know um as time goes on uh, our spirit wanes a little bit and so i want to go ahead and get this out of the way um so i will go a little bit into why i chose this but before i do let me say most of the books that i chose this year are going to have characters who are between 11 and 13 just because he's in that season of his life the majority of them are male not all um, i do believe in exposing him um to female authors and female main characters too just not um it won't be the popular thing that we do, but it'll definitely be present. So this book is about an 11-year-old boy named Jeannie. Um, he's from up north. With He lives with his parents, and then he doesn't know it, but to his surprise, he has to um, travel south to stay with his grandparents for the summer. And so it's just about all of those things and adventures that he would learn about being an 11-year-old boy raised up north and then having to spend the summer with your uh, grandparents in the South. If that's you, you know some of the different things. It's a different uh, life, city life versus country life, living with parents versus grandparents, etc. So we're gonna e explore those differences and we're gonna talk about the relationship that you know we have with our grandparents and why that's um, important. And I believe, yes, one of the reasons that um, he has to go down south is because his parents, their marriage is on the rocks and they're trying to work on it together without um, the children being there. So we'll also explore that a little bit. Not not too deeply because he's going in the sixth grade, but he can definitely be exposed to it and, and begin an intro to parental <laughs> relationships and, and things of that nature. So this is As Brave As You, Jason Reynolds. I am going to just write up a quick discussion guide to um, kind of help guide us as we read and then he is going to do a end of novel project for this book. Uh, this book is so new that there's not like you're not going to be able to go to TPT or you're not going to be able to go to a, a literature um, curriculum site and get a novel guide or any activities like that so I'm just going to write a, write a discussion guide for us to do and then he'll do um, a generic end of the year I mean end of the book project all right that's that one the second title that we're going to read is Island of the Blue Dolphins this is pretty much um, a classic title that most elementary children read it's a part of the American canon. I think it's a little bit more a part of the homeschooled American canon than it is the traditional American canon, but nonetheless, it exists in both worlds, and I thought it best to expose him to it. Um, my son is a very, very major fan of survival books, adventure with survival being a theme. Um, we are going to be talking in our um, geography studies and some of our world history studies, we're going to be talking about the presence of Pacific Islanders and Native Americans um, throughout the Americas and into the Caribbean. So this will be uh, very good for him to get 
some history behind um, Karana. She's an Indian girl living in the Pacific. Um, she gets left or stranded on the island, and for the pretty much the duration of the book, years and years go on, and she learns how to feed herself, take care of herself, etc., on her own um, in a deserted state, uh, making shelter, weapons, food, fighting her enemies, and all of that. Um, so I know my son will love the, the survival element <clears throat> of this book. I believe this is the only book that doesn't have a male main character. Yeah, exclusively it is. So this one kind of stands out. Um, we have, we're going to be learning about characterization with that book. Um, I am using a flip book in order to do that. And for the most part, the character is her. But there's a few other characters that we'll discuss and, and talk about as well. All right, our third selection is A Gift from Childhood, Memories of an African Boyhood. It's the third book that we'll be reading. Um, I do try to make sure that um, the books that we're reading are not only set in America or are not only written by an American. So I do want him to see other diasporans um, either writing the literature or being discussed in the literature as the main character, etc. So this book um, is going to go through the culture of Mali, a West African country um, that he has already learned so much about, but this is going to give a little bit more insight. So in their tradition, um, the children, I don't know if it's the children or if it's just the male children, so we'll have to figure that out as we study Mali as we read this book, but I'm just going to say children for right now. Um, the children will leave their home that they are living with with their parents and go to their, I forget if it's maternal or paternal, I forget which family, which grandparents he goes to. So I need to find out. But they go to either the maternal or the paternal um, grandparents' house and the grandparents there begin to educate, what they call educate. Um, the child or the children and then the grandparents make the assessment to is this child now educated enough to go to school so that education that the grandparents give is a more cultural way to live a more um, survival way to live and then after the child has mastered that the grandparents communicate with the parents he's educated enough to go to like school school uh, what we would call traditional school I think that's interesting and I really want to discover that with him teach that to him and, and see even some of the some of the culture in West Africa um, seeps into some black American culture that we have so we'll be making those um, contrasts and comparisons as well um, and then eventually he ends up moving back with his parents and then which is a, a bigger city the grandparents end up living a little bit more in rural life than the parents do and he makes his way um, to America at this point you know he's confident he's self-aware he knows who he is he knows what gifts he has and to offer the world I think he ends up becoming an artist yeah he it becomes a writer and an artist in America and it pays tribute to this Malayan tradition so I really want to be able to discuss um, boyhood I want to be able to discuss um, Africa, specifically Mali, and how we pay tribute and honor um, our elders, our parents, and our ancestors through um, the teachings that they've given us and, and how we live that out in our lives as adults. All right, so a gift from childhood, it's Baba, 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 I think you say it, um, Dia Kite, or Dia Kite. All right, our fourth book, another Jason Reynolds, is Ghost. I have to say, I am still working my way through reading all of these. I try to pre-read as much as um, I can. Well, actually I do, I pre-read what he reads before. And Ghost is by far my favorite as of yet. So Ghost, um, I believe he's in seventh or eighth grade. Um, so he's in the middle school era, even though he's not quite a sixth grader. Um, his game is basketball, right? It's pretty traditional for African American males. And he ends up having a situation in his life where he has to run, like physically run for his life. Um, and it has to do with the relationship between his parents. So that's another thing that we're going to be exploring this year, as I mentioned before. And he it actually ends up setting a trend for him just running um physically running and then also emotionally running 
um, for certain issues in his life. Um, and then he um, begins to pick up track, um, not knowing he's going to be any good at it. He doesn't even recognize it as a sport initially. But one thing that he does recognize, I'm good at running. I've been running, so let's do this. Um, so he ends up getting on his track team. He... He goes pretty far, he, all the way to the Olympics, like it, it carries him a, a great distance. And so I want to be able to talk um, to my son about running emotionally and physically, some of the, the sports that tends to be popular um, among our people and why we have the physicality and um, the ability to, to excel in sports like, you know, track and basketball, etc. cetera, um, why we're drawn to it and all those things. We'll get into some of the culture, um, and the actual physicality behind the black male. Um, we are also going to talk about Usain Bolt. He's mentioned here. Um, we're going to talk about the Olympics, the, the history behind that, and the African American presence, and also the diaspora presence, because um, obviously Usain Bolt is not American. Um, that is in the Olympics and throughout major sports throughout the world, but particularly America as well. Um, very, very good book for African American boys if you are okay with exposing your child to um, some issues that could arise between parents and their relationship. Ghost by Jason Reynolds again. All right, our next book that we're going to read is The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963. Um, most people are familiar with this title. Um, I, I think I waited until sixth grade because I wanted him to compare and contrast, or at least have the ability to compare and contrast, American life um, of the 60s with another um, location or setting um, that diasporans are in in the 1960s as well. Um, okay, so the next title, I'm going to show you that. But I mean, this is you know a traditional story. An American family is living up north. They're going to go down south in order to visit grandparents and all of the danger and adventure and issues that can come from the travel alone, let alone, and then also the visit, excuse me, also the visit having to be in the south in the 1960s and then of all places, Birmingham, Alabama, which I think the book even says toward one of the darkest moments in America's history. Um, um, there's a juvenile delinquent, as it's called, um, in this title. I believe he is 13, um, even though the book is really about the 10-year-old. So we're going to talk about those two characters and, you know, why would one be sweet and one be delinquent? Like, what's going on here? So we'll definitely explore um, that with him. Okay, and then the next title that I have is The Jacob Ladder. All right, and this is going to be um, one of the skills that middle school students begin to work on. It's not just contrast and compare like they did in elementary um, school, but compare and, contra mm, compare and contrast, excuse me, two different novels. So he'll read Watson's and then we'll read The Jacob Ladder and he'll actually be comparing and contrasting the two books. So we'll have to take great notes on the first one so that he can do a lot of recall. All right, but. The Jacob Ladder is about, I forget how old is this child? He is 12, his name is Tall T. Um, it is set in Jamaica in the 1960s, just like Watson's is set in America in the 1960s, and so that'll be um, the majority of the comparing and contrasting that we do. Um, so getting into some Jamaican culture, uh, there is a woman here, that they, they, she has a cultural name, I think it's Obeya. We'll get correct pronunciations before we actually read so we could be culturally appropriate. Anyways, she ends up slipping um, Tall T's father some Kalaloo. Um, it's potioned or it has, uh, here we call it the root. <laughs> it ha it's potioned or it has some type of spell or something on it um, that causes his father to leave, completely abandon his family. Tall T is one of six and his mother works as a laundress. Of course, she doesn't make very much money. So Tall T has to now assume the role of head of household or man of the house. And he begins to go on this new adventure as he explores what it's like to earn a living and to take care of um, his house. And so we will definitely be exploring that. It's, it is a true story. Um, 
And one of the things that his mother tells him, and that's why it's called the Jacob Ladder, is um, you have to learn to be like Jacob in the Bible. Um, the Jacob who dreamed the miracles and tall T is definitely like, yes, I'm going to need one. So he, he does embody that persona a little bit. And so we'll talk about the biblical connection there as well as the historical connection to Jacob as well. All right, The Jacob Ladder by Gerald Hosman. All right, the next book that we are going to read is A Biography, Bob Marley, All right? So <clears throat> you're gonna see a lot of Caribbean or island yeah, themes running. We're gonna be studying about that in geography again, um, a little bit of history as well. So it does show up in our, in our literature selections. Um, whether we were studying about the Caribbean though or not, um, we would have read about Bar Marley for grade six. Um, my son's a fan of Bar Marley. I'm a fan of Bar Marley. Um, and this is just what we would have chosen anyways. So this is the book that I've selected. It seemed to be of the Bar Marley biographies, not that there's a whole lot, but of them, this seemed to be the one that he could understand um, the best. It's a series of short readable biographies. Um, so we can read a small piece, put it down and obviously pick it back up with a, a new a newness and a freshness that's there. It doesn't weave together necessarily. Um, so of course, some of the things we're going to be talking about is the culture that exists, the history, um, obviously his life and, and, and the events there, um, his relationships. We're spending a lot of time talking about Why? relationships. Um, as he's coming into himself, we were just talking about um, how we treat people, what's not okay, what is okay, what's healthy, what's not, how do men respond to women, and vice versa, etc. So we'll be exploring how some people that we read about do that and, and what we agree with and what we don't. Um, obviously we'll be talking about oppression is another theme. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit about Rastafarianism as well as that is the religious belief that Bar Mali prescribed to. Next, we're going to have Tales from Shakespeare, and I already did a video about this, so I won't go into this. Um, this is gonna be our Shakespeare reader for all of middle school. I've already mentioned that there's 10 um, plays in here from Shakespeare, and so we're gonna read three this year, three in seventh grade, and four in eighth grade. I'll link the video to that in, this, in the description box as well, so you can have that. So, our next book that we're going to read is Garvey's Choice by Nikki Grimes. And I like Nikki Grimes. My youngest son also has a book by her, and I'll be sharing that video later as well. Um, I really tried to introduce verse or lyricism to the children right about fourth or fifth grade and continue to do so. Um, it's an interesting genre. Um, I like it. I, we can also study poetry and figurative language more deeply. Um, so Garvey's choice. Garvey is a boy who, um, he's not a sportsaholic, and his father very, very much is. So this is a story about um, how does a son respond when he's not the son his father hoped for. Um, he has a little bit of peer pressure and peer influence. He has a, the story also goes into him, uh, his best friend, and we'll, we'll talk about that dynamic too, what it's like to have a friend. Um, but he's a bookworm, he's a jokester, he's loyal, he's into music and math, he's a very gifted kid, just not in athleticism. So we'll also be contrasting this with um, Ghost, where Ghost is like the epitome of the sports and this is just what boys do and then of course it has a little bit of what black boys do um, and Garvey's not like that he's like hey I'm gifted just not in sports so we'll be exploring that um, dynamic as well um, and outside of track and swimming my son isn't a real big football or basketball person either so I'm pretty sure he'll identify with that book in that way all right next up is the K all right, the K is set on an island as well. Um, but this is gonna talk more about the invasion of Europeans 
um, in indigenous lands. And we did American history, we studied American history this year. So we talked a lot about imperialism and colonization um, and just the oppression of European powers on African people and other indigenous people, pr predominantly African people, because we were in America. Um, but he's going to see that outside of America here. Like, the European powers did not just oppress um, black Americans, you know, they have oppressed all colors and, and groups of people, all colors of people and groups of people throughout the world. And so he'll definitely see that with this book. Um, the Germans come in to invade this island. Um, Philip is the main character. Philip is not um, an African American boy. He's actually a white boy. I, th I believe um, he is, I believe he's German. I'm not sure. Um, but one of the men on the island, this black guy right here, he's an elder um, and he is native to the island so he knows how to get around. So he, he actually, Timothy actually ends up needing his help in order to know what to do to navigate, how to survive, how to live. And so um, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the power of being native to the land. We'll talk about the difference between how the different groups live. We'll talk about the motive and the intent behind European powers coming to colonize and overpower um, a place. And we'll talk about the strength and the genius of, of black people as if without this man, Timothy would have definitely been left on his own, probably to his death. Um, one thing that I really want to pull out here, Philip, um, is left without his parents. So he's left by himself on this island and this um, West Indian man is his only hope. But he remembers one thing that his mother says and that is they are different and they live differently. And so Timothy is going to have to deal with that I guess nugget that his mother left him and then what's actually before him as this West Indian man begins to help him survive and and learn how to live on this island. All right, so that's The K by Theodore Taylor. Next, we have A Taste of Honey Stories by, J by Jabari Asin. Uh, this book is set in the 1960s too, but it's set at the end of the 1960s, so it is not gonna be quite the same as the beginning. Um, a lot of upheaval um, is here. It is, um, it's like poetry fiction, um, but the reason I chose it is because it's short stories. I wanted to introduce short stories to my, to my sixth grader um, this year. The short stories do connect, um, but we're going to read them individually on their own. I forget how many they are, and we may even um, do half of it this year and half of it next year, so I haven't decided yet. Oh, 16. 16 connected stories. Um, that brings a razor-sharp focus to the tumultuous events of the social upheaval of 1968. Um, this has a lot of American black culture. Um, probably some that my child doesn't even know about yet, and I'll have to explain um, certain things. Uh, I cracked up when I read the very first story because it went all into the nicknames um, in black culture. Like, you could go here, and it had different... Um, truths, I would say, in black culture, like you could go your whole life and not know someone's real name and only know their nickname. Or nicknames are given to you for all sorts of reasons and they, they go into some of those. Um, even if you knew somebody's real name, you would only call them uh, by their nickname. To call somebody by their government name, as black Americans refer to it, it's like, you know, you're breaking code. So. I mean, I think it's called the very first one is I'd rather go blind, which see my son doesn't even know what that means. Yes, I'd rather go blind. So I have to, you know, tell him about Eddie James and that track and why that would make sense here and all that. So we're going to have a lot of fun times reading this and just exploring black culture um, in the 60s, but also all of what has been kept and preserved today that we still um, understand and honor. Um, lots of name dropping in here, Martin, Malcolm, um, and some other leaders of, of that time. Police brutality will be a theme, Black Panther will be a theme, um, so this is, this is going to be an awesome read. I can't wait to read this with him. Alright, and then our last book 
for the year is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, this does have, th this book, the main characters are a group of children, not just one. So in the group, there are males and females, so he'll have that dynamic, but it's not exclusively um, female like the Isle of the Blue Dolphins is. Um, so this book is just fantasy, 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 make-believe, make-believe. I did want to introduce him to this, this genre. I believe we've read one fantasy book before. Yeah, I believe it was in fourth grade. Um, but we're going to dig a little bit more into it um, this year as well. C.S. Lewis is heavily canonized, so I just feel like um, he needs to be exposed to his work just because he's going to hear about it all through middle school and high school. If you're talking literature, C.S. Lewis is definitely going to go, going to come up. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because <coughs> everybody knows about this book. Um, I was trying to remember what we're going to do. I'm forgetting, but it's in the blog post what we're going to do with this title. But nonetheless, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Um, there are some of the books. I'm going to go through the books that have movies attached to them because we will be watching them. Uh, in order to make a compare and contrast between that. So let me go through those really quickly. Um, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is a movie. The Watsons go to Birmingham. And the Tales from Shakespeare, some of the um, plays that we're going to read about this year have movies associated with it. So we'll watch those. And then we're going to watch some clips for Bob Marley. And I believe there was one more. Oh, we're going to watch clips for Usain Bolt when we go, when we um, read about Ghost. And I believe that's it. All right, so let me know if you have any questions about my selections or um, anything that I said that I wasn't clear on and you want me to go over, let me know. Shalom.